loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about the Gemini New Moon. I have some cards that are pulled. I have some messages that came through during my meditation. And um, yeah, I want to share all those things with you. Before I get started, I don't know how much you can see right now, but I do have a little bit of a mess. For me, it's a mess. I'm a Virgo, though. But there's a stack of candle magic jars that we need to pack up and ship out. This is one of them from the recent shop update. I'm pretty sure the majority of these Conjure Magic candle magic jars did sell out. But for those of you guys that didn't place your order or you, you didn't jump on it fast enough or they sold out faster than you could load your cart up, um, there is going to be a shop update sooner rather than later. But for those of you guys that did, this is my first time sharing how I work candle magic with the world publicly. And we are going to be packing them up and wrapping them up and then sending them out pretty pretty fast. Some of you guys already started receiving your intention oils from the from this weekend. So that same day that the shop opened, reopened was your order is you know dropped off at the post office because we are on it this time. That is very Gemini energy in as uh, you know in a nutshell, is the speed, the movement, the momentum, when you are focused, when you are, you know, um, just pushing out your distractions and you've lived and you've learned and your energy is high, that is when things tend to build up and that's when things tend to take off and that's when things start, again, building their momentum and shooting through. And that's something that I'm seeing with the Gemini New Moon. It's interesting because... With this new moon, there are some major power planets, Saturn and Pluto, that are currently retrograde, and they are notoriously known for kind of slowing, thing, slowing things down and halting things, these two planets. Saturn is a planet of challenges and restriction and rules and regulation, and it wants to build a firm foundation for everything and anything that it is that it gets its hands on. It wants to make sure that you're mature. It wants to make sure that you're ready. But... When this planet is reversed, it starts to challenge, it starts to restructure, it starts to kind of switch things up so that you can learn the most, gain the most, so that when this planet goes direct again, that you are strong. The word that came through during my meditation was actually fortitude, which is your ability to withstand the test of time, your ability to, you know, no matter what is going on in your external world and Gemini energy at the time of this, you know, the, we're talking about the Gemini new moon. So we're working with Gemini energy. Gemini can be very frazzled. It can be very easily distracted. It can be very chaotic. It can bring in some chaotic information. It can bring in some chaotic feelings and some chaotic thoughts. So with Saturn retrograde and with Pluto, so Pluto rules transformation, destruction, the soul, the, the, the soul, the, you know, the, the shadow sides within ourselves, um, total death, total rebirth, total regeneration. And that's what Pluto is doing now um, within all of our charts, within your chart, within my chart, within our world, government is being shifted. Our ideals are being shifted. How our, our society, our culture, what was once important to us is now being challenged because of our government, because of our mindsets, because of what our government currently looks like. If it wasn't for people who were so disrespectful to our earth, were so disrespectful to human rights that were running our government, and I'm sorry to say it, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be banding together so strong in order to counteract that. Whenever there is shadow, there is always light, and that is the positive of our government right now, if you can look at it that way. So despite your political beliefs, uh, you know, I'm not here to spark a debate, but that is the reality of the situation. So that's what it is that we're seeing here. But it's whenever you see that opposition, it helps to bring people together because it's, this is what we have in common. This is what is important to us, and we need something to reflect that. So we're seeing that within our government. But within ourselves, what it is that we're seeing is, and what it is that you'll be seeing, and it's different for everyone because this reading is very general. It's for a general audience. I don't have your specific astrology chart pulled up in front of me. So this reading is not directly for you in particular. It's for all of us collectively. So you want to definitely check to see what Gemini rules within your chart. For me, it's my 12th house. Interestingly enough, just yesterday I said that, 
you know, starting in June, and I was feeling this a week ago, but I, I, starting in June, I was going to disconnect from the world. I was going to disconnect from others. I was going to pull back. I was going to retreat. I was going to be spending more time with my ancestors, more time studying my history, more time creating a specific set of rituals throughout the day that are going to be a part of, you know, my new life, you know, a part of my new routine a part of my new spiritual journey that are set into place starting June 1st. Now it's June 3rd. Pulled my chart and then I was just like, well, duh, Jess, it's the Gemini new moon. For you, that's going to be in your 12th house of, you know, uh, seeking, of really inner seeking, not for the, the, the sole reason of healing, although that is going to be a benefit from it. But I just need to pull back from the world and reconnect and recenter with spirit once more. I feel like there's a lot of conversations that spirit and I need to have. I feel like there's a lot of conversations that my ancestors and I need to have. And I'm going to be detaching in order to attach to something, in order to reconnect, in order to realign. And that is something that is for me and my spiritual journey. But for you, it might be different. But either way, what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling, and, and when I looked at the chart, is your thoughts, your thinking, it's the, those frazzled bits or the frazzled aspects of your life, the frayed ends of your life, the things that haven't really fallen together yet, that don't really make sense. I'm seeing us kind of weave them together, snip them off, clean them off in order to reprogram in order to realign in order to shift into something that is stronger that is it like woven together it's almost like a quilt that I'm kind of getting this like a blanket and you've had this blanket for years maybe it's a mindset maybe it's a relationship maybe it's a belief system maybe it's your work whatever but you've had this Thing, whatever this thing is and you've been working on it so diligently but and you've been using it and it brings comfort to you but certain things about this need to get cleaned up they need to get polished they need to maybe some things need to get cut out maybe some things need to be repatched and reworked but that's what it is ultimately that it is that I'm seeing the word that came through was fortitude and this shows me that what you love and what you desire is something that is very real, something that is not only very real, but is given to you by the divine, given to you by spirit, given to you by, you know, the sense of longing, the sense of purpose. And that is a part of your destiny. I truly believe this. And not only do I believe this in my personal life, but I believe this as I'm looking at the cards. And I, it's confirmed when I look at the astrology chart. So what I'm seeing is this inner knowing, these thoughts, these messages, these signs that you see. And when you see them, sometimes it's like this, these dragonflies. I've been seeing a lot of dragonflies lately where you just want to capture them and jar them. Like you'll see these signs, but they flit around all over the place. And as soon as you see it, you get excited, you get sparked, you get ignited up. But I'm seeing you observing. I'm seeing you see the sign, take it as a sign, and then say, with gratitude, appreciation, and thank you. And this is going to be a part of your fortitude. This is what this new moon's energy is going to bring. So you're going to see these signs. You're going to see these signals. And instead of you wanting to run and grab them and capture them so that as a reminder, as confirmation, you see it, you accept it, you acknowledge it, you say you give gratitude for it, but you let it go because it's just all that it is is confirmation all of it is all of it is a message that confirms that you are at the right you know you're on the right path you're manifesting you're moving you're in alignment and things are happening that is what your fortitude is going to look like what i don't want to see and what this new moon what i'm seeing is instead of this ripping on instead of this you know, strength. Sometimes we look at strength as, okay, this is mine. I am relentless. I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to beat it down. I'm going to break down a path. You don't have to do all of that. Your strength is not observed by the universe in your force. Oh, sorry, you guys. I have a little, um, you know, a little pain in my eye just now for a second. That was weird. But your strength is not shown in your ability to force your will and to break the way, to bust down that wall because that energy is getting directed in removing the obstacle instead of it just opening up. You know, sometimes that wall, that resistance, 
it's just present in the moment, but there's another way. You know, they, they always say that when a door closes, there another door opens. Or if there's a door that is locked, there might be a window that is open. But what I'm seeing is when we see, and when I see the word fortitude, when that came to me during my meditation, I saw that not as, you know, strength as far as forcing. I see it as what lingers and what has existed will never go away. And what that thing is, is what you love. What that thing is, is the vision. What that thing is, is what you are in alignment with. What you're vibrate, like what you, what you are vibing with, what you are attracted to. It's not surface level attraction. It's deeper than that. Why is it deeper? Well, because Saturn um, retrograde and Pluto retrograde have shown you that through thick and through thin, when this person is good or when they're bad, when this job is hard or when it's easy and amazing, you still stay with it. You're not forcing your way through. You're not forcing that person to love you. You're not forcing that person to choose you. You're not forcing abundance to come in. You're not pulling clients in. Hopefully, you're not doing any of these things. Fortitude is you staying in a space where what is for you has not left you because it is 100% for you. The love you have for that, the passion you have for that, the desire, the motivation, the ambition, it doesn't get removed from you because the obstacles around are greater than your love for it. The reason why your love is so strong and the reason why you're so motivated, the reason why you're so ambitious is because this thing has your name written all over it in gold. It is set there, not in stone, but in soul and in spirit. It has been there before the, the, the beginning and the end of time. Does that make sense? Does that resonate? I have chills because that is the truth. That is the reality. This is yours. That is what fortitude is. So what I'm seeing, my loves, is I'm seeing a little give and a little take. I'm seeing that your strength is going to come from a space where, again, it's not forcing, but it's seeing, it's observing. And when you observe, just say, you know, have gratitude for it. When you see what you love resonate and speak up, have gratitude for that moment because everybody is doing the best that they can with what they have, with what they got, and the majority of people are on survival mode. But you and me, we're on a different level where we're not on survival mode, we're on manifestation mode. We're, we're aligning with spirit. So we know that this universe is abundant, and because it's abundant, it's going to provide. Why is it going to provide? Because the universe is not here to punish us. We punish ourselves with our own expectations, with our own limitations. That is where the punishment comes from. Okay, our, our potential here is limitless. I am limitless, limitless, you are limitless. So that's what I'm seeing with this Gemini new moon is these signs that come in, instead of us capturing them and putting them on our apothecary walls in a jar and being like, this was a sign, this was a moment. Accept it, see it, realize that that message was for you. You don't even need to ask for confirmation for someone else. You know, you don't need to ask them for, you know, does this, did, I saw this sign and when you tell them, to tell this to another person, then do they have the same response to you? How could they? That sign was for you, not for them. Don't look for validation from others. That was just for you. They're not going to feel it the same way you did because this was yours. It's not their, theirs. So some things are sacred. Some things don't need to be shared. Some things don't need to be expressed. Some things don't need to be understood. Not everybody needs to know. So that's what it is that I'm seeing. With this give and this take, I'm seeing, you know, Give and take, it's almost like I, you know, I, when I take, I'm not going to pluck this flower. I'm not going to pluck this thing. I'm not going to, when you, someone says, you know, I appreciate you or I, I, I value you or you get a raise or come with me and travel with me, you know, it is what it is. Thank you. Thank you. But it means nothing, but it is, it does have significance to it, but it's, it's words at the end of the day. It's just a sign. It's just confirmation. So allow it to flow, allow it to come in because what is for you will not be removed from you. That's what I mean by give and take. So when you are taking, you just take it for what it is and you give back gratitude for it. This is the, the image that just came through in the words. I don't know why is the butterfly. I just see it as um, strong in itself, but I see it as fragile as well. So it's handling it very gent gently, very delicately, whether it be an intention, a relationship, this project, this new seed, whatever it is that's developing, you're not pulling at it. You're not pulling its wings off because you're, if you 
or tugging at this beautiful butterfly, you're going to pull its wing off and it can't fly. It can't do what it does. So it stays grounded and it'll, it'll, it'll die. It'll suffer. It'll die. And that was not your intent for it. But because you couldn't give it the space and the respect that it needs, it could never fly, chew you back, forth, pollinate the other plants. It can't do what it was that it was designed to do because you touching it too much, you manhandling it, plucked all of the beauty of its wings off. You know what I mean? So I hope that that message resonates. The other thing is that I'm seeing that there's this new mindset that needs to set into place. And I think that this mindset, it's very creative, it's very thinking outside of the box, but it's far, it's very efficient. And that's weird too, because it's very earth energy, it's very grounded. That's the vibe that it is that I'm getting from this. But, and it's grounded because it's realistic, it's practical, but this mindset is going to come from a very creative, ethereal, spirit, like next level realm. So I'm seeing our feet being grounded, but I'm also seeing us connected to inspiration, creativity, um, divine, you know, hearing these things, feeling these things. So you want to stay open, but you want to stay grounded. And that kind of counteracts each other sometimes because how do you keep your feet on the ground and your head in the clouds? You know what I mean? Like that balance. But it's when you basically what it is, it's like you know what it is that you want. You know what you're manifesting. You know what you desire. But what I also am seeing, a, you know, even though with this new moon, this, there's some seeds that are planted, I'm seeing what has already been created just gets taken to the next level. It's not a totally new beginning. For some of you guys, it is. But it's things that have already somehow been set into place, that have already been set into motion. Let's say you were in a new in a relationship for a while, and with the last full moon, you guys ended up having to break up because a lot of you guys did have some breakups. So even though you're on this fresh step in this new relationship or this new life or new singlehood, singledom, you know, it's not that even though that is new, it almost to me in the spiritual world, in the spirit realm, with energy, with the vibration, it's almost like, okay, to her it's new, to him it's this new journey, but this has actually been set into place for a long time. And that relationship, that job, that thing, that moment, that trip, that whatever, that event, that opportunity, that mindset was just another, you know, moment this another like milestone that is a part of this bigger picture that helps to get them, him, her, whoever to this ultimate destination. So if you, maybe you are starting a new journey, maybe you are on this new phase within your life. But when I see it, I see it as all in how spirit sees. It, it's like, you're just, you're just continuing something that has already been set into motion, but now something is different about it. The energy is different. The people are different. The opportunities are different. A door has opened up here. And it requires your mind to be open. It requires you to communicate. It requires you to be honest. It requires you to be authentic. You might be a little weird. It might be, it might feel a little weird, a little different, but because it's you who are different. What you want is different than what you've had. So of course it feels a little different. <laughs> So that's ultimately, that's what I'm seeing here. And I think that by being efficient, when we hear the word efficient, we think, okay, we're going to do what is realistic. But what, what efficiency means in spirit right now is that if you guys see me looking over here, it's because I'm looking out into space. My plants are back here and some paint brushes and a, and a tea, a tea kettle and a unicorn. <laughs> I'm not looking at anything. I'm just kind of spaced out while I'm talking to you because that's how I am. But when we hear the word efficiency, sometimes we think, okay, efficient means I'm going to do this plan. This is my to-do list. This is what I know. No, efficiency means that what I'm doing works. I'm doing less and somehow I'm gaining more. That's what efficiency is. And that's what I'm seeing here is that it's not that it's going to be realistic and make sense to you. It's that Doing this new way, shifting, and you doing less is actually going to help you to tap into receiving more, getting more, seeing progress, then seeing the shift. And by being efficient, you're being open-minded. You're not limiting yourself to what can happen. You're opening up. You're seeing the signs. You're following your spirit, following your vibration. I vibe with this. I'm forcing this. 
even if I felt like I was forcing this in the past, because again, this is something that's continuing on. So maybe something felt like you're forcing it in the past, but for some reason there was a vibration there. For some reason there was attraction. For some reason it didn't make sense to you, but you honored it and you went with it. There were some obstacles, but those obstacles didn't stop because there was something there that you knew was for you. So, and that was where your fortitude came through, was not you forcing it or not you pushing it, but you saying like, okay, I'm just not going to abandon this in totality. Maybe some aspects need to be cut because they've been frayed. Remember like the beginning of this message, but it just shifts now. That's the message that is that I'm seeing. That's what it is that I'm seeing is, and then the ultimate outcome of this, I know this is going to scare some of you guys, but these cards to me came out, well, they came out as the outcome and it's the 10 of swords, the three of swords reversed. Both of these are reversed. And then also the two of wands reversed. I don't see that. I, I see this as abandonment, but in the sense of I have let go of, and I have abandoned the wound. I have abandoned the suffering. I have abandoned the ending, this struggle. This old cycle of my life that I have been looking towards and observing this perspective. I've been standing on the same shores, looking out in the distance, expecting the same result. And I've been fucking myself up doing that. That same mindset, me waiting to have the worst, me waiting and accepting less than I deserve, me um, settling for minimum wage when I deserve to make so much more for myself. I abandoned that because that has fucking hurt me. It has held me back. It has kept me in the dark. I have seen so much for myself. I can see everybody else seeing the light. I've seen people growing. I've seen people getting, you know, finding the love of their lives. I've been expecting the worst for myself. That is what I let go of because this, this mindset, this darkness mindset that's been around me, it has blocked all of the blessing. It has blocked all of the light. It has blocked all of the happiness, the joy, the pleasure, the vitality. I am a human being that is of this universe, that is of the divine, and I am abundant as well. But I have been waiting for the worst again and again. It has given me chaos. It's been giving me anxiety. I, My energy, my strength has been in walling myself up and forcing my will. That is not who I am to my core. That has never been who I have ever, who I, who I am. That's where the give and the take comes from. You give your faith, you give your light, you give your energy, you give your truth, your honesty, and what you're taking back, and you give your gratitude, and what you take from it is just the signs. You take from it the messages, and you use that to fuel yourself. And what you have abandoned with this new moon in Gemini is you've abandoned this perspective, you've abandoned this mindset, you've abandoned looking and expecting only the worst for yourself. All that has given you in the past was this upright, ending after ending, struggle after struggle, that fucking cycle, it ends. It ends. It sucks that it happened, but it's amazing that it happened at the same time because it taught you so much. A part of what it taught you was how much you love and how much you want and how much you desire, but it also taught you this. It taught you to have tension. It taught you to, to lose your faith, to force, to fight, and to second guess what can happen. And to believe in less than what it is that you deserve. When in reality, this is yours. There is a lot of passion, a lot of fire that is there for you. That, it, you know, it just ignites you. It's what gets you excited. You can choose to believe this message or you can abandon it. By the end of the day, it's give and take. Take this message for what it is or release it. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means a lot to me that you share. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.